Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and in this video, I just want to show a few of the strange sounds that I've heard over the last little while and uh, put some of those video clips together and how we resolved them. So this one happened to be the timing chain tensioner had actually punched all the way through the tensioner arm. As you can see, there's a big gaping hole there and it was rubbing on the chain. So I had to take off the whole timing cover, redo the timing chains uh, because I wasn't sure if the chain was compromised and it's a good idea to redo it anyway. So a full video install on that and everything, that was a pretty big job. But hearing that sound, I had... You know, it could have been a lot of things. I had to listen to it with a stethoscope and, and really diagnose it, but uh, I was happy to get all new uh, timing set in there. So it uh, runs really smooth now. Sounds really good. Okay, and here's the throw out bearing. Listen to it. Yeah, <laughs> that's supposed to spin. So, throw out bearing is toast on this. <laughs> Go ahead and pull it out. This bearing is toast. It seized itself to the input shaft, it appears, and now it's it's on there still really tight. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to really pry this off, but it, the bearing should just slide right off along with the clutch uh, fork. It, comes off together. Okay, we're having to spray this with liquid wrench because in this case the bearing has seized itself onto the input shaft and uh, it's not a good thing. Okay, we had to use some liquid wrench because that bearing was uh, seized. Now we're pulling off the clutch fork and the bearing at the same time because it's they're both still connected. Okay. Then we're gonna drop it, either yeah, drop it down. Actually, pull it out the other way. There you go. And so now we have our input shaft, and we're gonna have to really look at this and make sure that it's not messed up from it being seized down there. And when this one seized so bad, it actually started to do an orbital movement and ground up the and inside of the pump. And this is not a Terminator pump because the Terminator pump has the, the plate welded on the back. So this was some aftermarket one, it looks like, or at least for a different deal. Old water pump bearings right here that are falling out. better and so I'm going to show you what a bad pulley sounds like or bad bearing you hear that okay you hear that so you think well it's spinning right no problem nope this uh, is completely dry. The bearings in here have no grease. And I'll show you what they're supposed to look like and then we'll tear this one apart to show you what it looks like. But just because it's spinning doesn't mean it's okay. Um, and the reason why is because uh, the faster it spins without grease or anything in there, uh, it's gonna heat up and it's eventually gonna seize. And these pulleys, especially on the Terminator, on the, uh, the supercharger belt system, these ones, they will actually explode when they get too hot. So here's a good bearing on this pulley. And two things, one, you'll listen to what it sounds like, but uh, this is what it sounds like. Okay, you don't even hear it. And notice how it slows down on its own. 
Okay, so a good bearing will slow down on its own because it's filled full of grease on the inside. Everything's rolling around how it should as far as the bearings are concerned. So here's a, here's a, a, a new one. I'm going to go ahead and pull off the seal here and show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is a brand new one here. As I pull this seal off, see that? See those bearings in there? See how they're they're filled full of grease? Okay, that's what should be happening there. You got these uh, grease-filled bearings. Okay, well there's grease in there around the bearings. So as it's turning, that's what's happening. It's all rolling on there. All right, so let's go ahead and tear this one open and see what it looks like. Okay, so here's one with, uh, if it's never been changed, this is 200,000 miles on this one. As you can see, let me turn a light on even on this. So as you can see, trying to spin that with literally no grease in there. Okay, that's what that one looks like. It's, it's pretty much just dry. You can hear the grittiness. So do they still spin? Yes, but there's no grease or anything in there. It's uh, eventually going to be just hot metal on metal. So next we removed the belt to run the car and eliminate that it was anything to do with like the water pump pulley, if it was a bearing or anything like that. And it literally sounded like it was in the valve train or possibly even something in the intake. Like it was reverberating through it, the whole engine bay. So it was kind of hard to find. But ultimately we realized it was coming more from the bottom side. To test the throwout bearing, we disconnected the cable, pushed the fork away, the car was still in neutral so we could still start it, and the noise was still there. Finally we checked the starter and it definitely sounded like it was coming from the starter. So. Our idea was the starter was probably not fully disengaging and it was dragging on the flywheel. So sadly you could see that it has uh, eaten at the flywheel a little bit, but I didn't see any missing teeth or any problems. It just marred it up a little bit. Yeah, I'll just do the starter. Bad starter. Cobra because he was hearing a little bit of a clunk and uh, so I was watching him as he was moving it to see if it was a loose brake caliper or uh, a knuckle or something like that and uh, I found it was coming from the center of the differential so here on my car you can see right here this is called the dog bone it's a, a dampener for vibration um, noise, vibration, and harsh, harshness. And so this is kind of the orientation coming from my differential video that you'll see. And so the bracket for this is part of a shim. So if you were to remove this, as a lot of people do, you need to make sure that you keep the bracket or replace it with an equal sized shim. And so again, I'll put videos that I have for all this in the video description if you want to see. I have a playlist showing the rear differential removal and filling it and sealing it and everything like that. Uh, so just check the video description for that. But anyway, so on Justin's car, Justin SVT's car, he still had the bracket, but as you could see, it would move and actually kind of contact the differential. So that's what we were hearing. So here it is with the car running.
job. So I was hearing this sound, and of course, it's coming all the way through the drive crane up through the shifter. It sounded like it was coming from the shifter on the drive home. And uh, so after we got looking into it, it was actually the ABS reluctor ring. This is pressed on, and so this had come off and it was just freewheeling. So in the end, all I really had to do was have a new ABS ring pressed on, but what fun would that be, right? So at this time, I only owned the Mach 1. I didn't have my Cobra yet, and I built the rear end to be a 31 spline with four tens and made some really good videos, and so I'll put the link to those in the description. So for this last one, basically the pinion nut had come loose. This was years ago before I rebuilt the rear end, and uh, the pinion ate the traction lock, so uh, it made a really weird noise. But anyway, put in the comments the noises you've had and what they ended up being. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.